Good morning everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be starting a new series, as promised. Um, I'm going to share with you how I created one of the giveaways, which was a uh, paper bag that had been waxed um, with beeswax, and then I added a doily as a flap, and then it was a mini journal. So I have not done one in advance, but you can go back to the giveaway video and see what uh, I'm referring to. So, first thing you're going to need, and you just can tweak this with what you've got available in your house. Uh, I've got the giant lunch bags, which are six inches by just over 12 inches. Um, but just alter it if you've got the original size uh, paper bag or lunch bag, you can just use that and then just scale down your uh, mini journal. Because the mini journal that I'm going to end up with is a 5 inch by 7 and 3 quarter inch journal. Um, and the papers I'm using today are from Nostalgia Graphic on Etsy. Um, they've got an amazing selection of digitals. Uh, I don't recall the name of this particular one, but um, it, they, they do have some beautiful digitals. And I had these already printed is why I've chosen this one. Um, so, because I've got to start trying to use these that I've printed out in advance, uh, I need to use those up, you see. So, okay, we're going to get started. And um, the first thing I do is just take this little flap here and turn it back down um, and then we're going to cut that that thick part off. Um, that's how I've done mine. So hopefully my blade is sharp because it's been a little while guys since I've been in here. Okay, yep, that's fine. That's come off. So that's the bottom part of the paper bag I've cut. I just folded it down and cut that off. Uh, because you don't want that extra bulk. And then just kind of um, measure where you want this to fall. And I'm just going to take maybe another half of an inch off because I don't want the bag to be too big. And the, this bottom portion of it, you can save that and we can use that to reinforce this flap, which is going to be the doily. Um, I think we might be able to make use of that. I believe the last one I may have used cardstock, but either way, just hang on to it for the time being. So now you've got the top of the lunch bag, and of course we've cut off, so it's, it's completely open. And what I do now is just flatten this back out and then we're going to need to measure again just trying to get that even so that the bag is completely opened up and the reason being is you're going to need to snip off some of this um, but before you cut it I think I would recommend that you just go ahead and take it to the machine and stitch it now, I could have just stitched it straight down with this inside, but the problem is this, you don't get, um, if this journal ends up a little bit bulky, it would be too snug. So I just kind of give myself a little bit more uh, working space because the original score lines, it would just be too tight. So I'm just going to come over maybe a half of an inch on each side because I know this is going to be just a very plain journal, but you may want to highly embellish yours. Um, but I know for this one, it's just going to be a plain writing journal with, with a pocket in the front and the back is, is basically all I'm going to do with it. So if I was to go ahead and cut this, you see, then I've got my papers, the front and the back aren't attached. And I would just rather, at this point, go ahead and run this through the sewing machine. And as I said, I'm just going to move over from that original line about a half of an inch. I'm going to stitch it down. Same thing here. Just try to 
give myself about a half of an inch all the way on those three sides and leave that open so that we can tuck our um, journal in. So that's going to be the next step. And then once that's done, guys, if you refer back to a video where I've done and how to use the beeswax, all I'm going to do is just take this in and apply beeswax. The only difference on this is when the beeswax is still a little bit warm, I would recommend that you take your uh, bone folder and open up the bag and maybe prop it on a glue bottle or something so that the um, beeswax can dry because if you let it dry together you will have more difficulty getting the um, front from the back to release um, and you might also have a bit of flaking of the um, beeswax depending on how thick you put it on. I put mine very thin but what it's going to do you see is then turn this into a um, a glassine. It's going to look like a glassine craft <coughs> bag and it's just beautiful. So I'm going to do uh, all of that in one step now and I'm not going to be able to show you guys unfortunately. So when I come back you will see the bag um, having been stitched and beeswaxed and then I will have trimmed off the excess. Um, and then we will get started on how to create the little flap, okay? Okay, guys, here is how this has come out. I did uh, two stitches, you know, just kind of... I tried not to be perfect with them. Not that I could actually do a perfect stitch, but I like the look of it when it's, when it's kind of zigzagging over each other. And then since I've added that beeswax, you'll see it's become kind of glassine, and I love the way that looks. And you can see some of the um, little bits of paper the glassine didn't take. I personally like that, but if that bothers you, you know, just add a few more little pellets of uh, beeswax. Okay, so now what we need to do is create a flap over this. And just, I just want to make sure yeah that's going to be plenty I mean I could have probably cut it down a bit more but bearing in mind this is only four pieces of paper and by the time you've got the front and the back and I add some um, other things it will bulk that out okay so I've just pulled some things in and this is a doily um, and then here's another, and personally, I like the contrast of the white with the craft. I just think it's a really nice combination. So, what I would do is thinking that this would kind of hang over like that, because bearing in mind, you're going to lose probably a half of an inch once that journal's inside. So, um this is why we've kept this. I'm going to take this bit and I'm going to keep more of the finished on, on, you know, on the inside because that's what we're going to see. Now, again, you could take coordinating paper and cover that if you want to. You could also beeswax that. If, you, if that bothers you that, that it's contrasting, just give that a little bit of, of um, beeswax on it. Or, like I said, you could add a nice um, image, but I'm not going to do it. I didn't do it on the last one, and I think it's it looks fine. So what I do is I just take it to the machine, and I'm going to stitch this down first. Um, and then we're going to start pulling things together. So let me just run that over, and I'll leave the camera on, guys. Um, it won't take me very long, I hope.
Okay guys, yeah, I think my bobbin's about empty, so I may have to change it before the next bit, but okay, so what it, what you're doing is you're just tacking that down so it doesn't slip around because it, it will be very annoying if it does do that. And then you're going to place this to where you think you want the flap to come, and this will start to um, work with you a bit more once you have played around with it. So that's a, that hangs a little bit too low, so I'm just going to get it to where I want that to be. That's fine there. Okay, so <clears throat> so the, I know that I'm going to want to start decorating this. And I last time I used a combination of paper with fabric and lace, but this time I've kind of pulled some stuff out, and you know I love this material. So I thought it would be fun. Although this is a shabby chic, I think the color from that, I think it'll coordinate okay with that because there's a lot of color in this kit. So I'm going to use that just because I think the contrast is so pretty and it, particularly against that white. So at this point, you know, just whatever, you're basically making a snippet roll on your flap is all you're doing. And you just decide what you like and just go. Okay guys, I'm sorry about that. My battery just went kaput. <clears throat> I haven't um, been keeping an eye on it, so there you go. <laughs> okay, so anyways, as I said, you just whatever appeals to you and you know if you've made snippet rolls you'll you'll know kind of the process. I've got a few things I just pulled out here and I'm just going to play with them and until I get it. And I like I like mixing creams with whites. I just think it's a really nice combo. So I'm kind of thinking something like this. So what I'm going to do is just take this to the machine and stitch all over that so that that's all in place. If you want to hand sew it, you can. If you want to add some slow stitching, it completely up to you but that's what I'm gonna go with guys and I will be back and then we will start to attach this and um, I think that'll be part one just just doing the bag because so many people will have already know how to do, do a journal so they probably just want to see this portion of it but okay guys I will be back and you'll see how this comes together Okay guys, I'll give you a close-up. Now you can see that's all been stitched. I even stitched around this little fabric. You've seen these. If, if you're in the U.S., you've seen these little uh, rosettes that come on the roll at uh, Hobby Lobby. You could Fabri-Tac it. I just, I like to make sure everything is completely secure. So now, at this point, um, I am just going to add some Fabri-Tac to this and I'm going I would recommend Fabri-Tac because of this being beeswax I don't know where my Fabri-Tac is guys oh dear um, but that's what I would recommend or again before you had stitched this all together you could have sewn it down actually I don't think you can because you want to stitch it before you beeswax it so yeah, get you some really good glue that you know is going to adhere, and once I've found mine, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue that down, and then that is going to, how that's how that bag is going to look when that's all done, and then we'll have our journal tucked inside. So part two, as I said, it's not going to be... Um, anything um, that I would say you haven't seen before. Someone had remarked that the style uh, journal was very different to what I normally do, so that's why I'm going to carry on with a part two on, on doing this small journal, um, because I will show you the faux leather 
technique again. I do have that on my YouTube channel if you're interested in checking that out. But I'll go over that sort of thing and then of course the embossing of it. Um, and and then I said, the journal itself is going to be very basic, guys. Um, just, just a couple of pockets. So nothing extremely exciting other than maybe some of you aren't familiar with uh, the faux leather. So we will go over that and um, I hope you'll enjoy this. This should be a two-part series. I can't see it going be beyond that, uh, but who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for your patience on <clears throat> me getting this out. I know I've been promising it for it's it feels like months now, but I don't think it's I don't think it's been maybe three four weeks. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of losing track of time. But thank you so much for for your patience on it all, and uh, thank you guys so much for your continued support of this uh, channel. I I cannot tell you how much it means to me. Um, it's just a great opportunity, and I I am grateful to each and every one of you. So. Take care of yourselves, and I'll be back uh, next week with part two. Bye-bye.